Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Steffi is astounded to watch Luna kiss her purported father at Bill's house. Brooke tells Ridge at Forrester that she was surprised to see Taylor at work. Ridge said that she has returned to resume her profession. Although Brooke believes Steffi will be content, the timing wasn't ideal. Ridge declares, this is a major problem. After realizing that her daughter went too far, Brooke knows the reason behind his anger. She will take care of Hope and is also concerned. Ridge gives her thanks. Steffi and Finn are at least safe. Brooke whispers, we are too. Then RJ bursts in, telling them that Bill isn't actually Luna's father after all. Regarding the paternity test, Ridge queries. RJ asserts that someone had to tamper with the outcomes. RJ asks Katie if she is aware of the paternity test as soon as she enters. Bill, according to Brooke, followed her advice. Bill took two more paternity tests and the results were the same, according to RJ. Luna is not the father of Bill. Steffi is horrified to hear Bill tell Luna, Luna, I warned you, you can't kiss me like that. When she is in his house, I may not be your father, but it must not occur once more. Luna apologizes. She has simply never encountered a man quite like him. I felt a connection with you since the day we first met, as if you were the missing piece. Luna notices that Steffi is in the foyer, listening as she glances in the mirror. Bill offers to get Luna some assistance as her heartbeat quickens. She collects herself, faces him again, and expresses gratitude. I really ought to get moving. Bill assures her that it's not necessary. Luna has some work-related matters to attend to. Luna leaves as Steffi dives out of sight. Bill doesn't notice as Steffi goes with her, but she leaves her phone on the side table right inside the door when she returns to get it. Katie says she'll speak with Bill in the main office. According to RJ, Bill and Luna are the only other people who are aware of it. Katie talks about how she pieced together Poppy's story. All of this was obviously part of a scheme to gain access to Bill's fortune. Where does that leave Luna? Brooke thinks. RJ is aware of her extreme vulnerability at this moment. Bill thanks Lee for coming to his house. She queries about Luna. She's fine, Bill replies, but she's not my daughter. Light queries incoherently. Bill adds that he chose to retest in light of Poppy's incarceration, but the outcomes were unfavorable. He conducted a backup test, and the outcomes were also negative. He queries Lee about whether she falsified the initial paternity test results. Lee disputes it. She would never act in such a dishonest manner. They've never been close, so she asks, why would I help her? To prove that, she is willing to submit to a polygraph exam. Bill sighs, saying, I think you. That test was manipulated by someone. Do you think it was Poppy? Lee isn't positive, but she is certain of one thing. Poppy is a gold digger, but murder. No, she was set up by someone. Entering her former flat, Luna berates herself for being so irresponsible, saying, Steffi might have seen me kiss Bill. At that moment, Steffi enters the room. Steffi, chirps Luna, how come you're here? Using her narrowed eyes, Steffi says, I know what you're up to, Luna. Brooke, Katie, Ridge, and RJ are amazed that Poppy was more hazardous than they had realized in the main office. All Katie wants is for the murderer to be in jail. It seems so strange to RJ. He never got the sense from Poppy that she was materialistic. They're all sorry for Luna because she took advantage of him. RJ regrets that she fell in love with Bill. She tells Steffi in Luna's apartment that her mother's that arrest has been difficult, enough? but she Not also me. discovered that Bill isn't actually her father. Is that why you kissed him? Steffi queries. It was not a tender, carefree kiss. She is aware that this is a trying moment, but she needs to examine herself and see that this is not right. As she pours her a glass, Luna remarks, it's hot outside. She admits to Steffi that she is ashamed of what transpired. I realize that kissing Bill was a terrible idea. 
She continues talking about how much has happened in her life. After taking a sip of her drink, Steffi wonders whether she's attempting to defend her actions. Bill is a really gorgeous man, but Luna claims that's not at all. Perhaps it was merely an emotional transference. When Steffi inquires about her mother, RJ responds, That's your lover. Luna, who are you? She takes another sip of her beverage. Ridge informs RJ in the main office that he has every right to worry about Luna. All he wants is to support her. Katie explains that although this is strange, it's not Luna's fault at all. RJ claims that his girlfriend will be living with Bill and spending a lot of time there. Bill asks Lee at his house why someone would set Poppy up. What could they possibly gain? Luna sip her drink at the apartment, and Steffi does the same. Luna talks on and on about how surprised Steffi must have been to witness her kiss Bill, particularly since she was unaware that they were not father and daughter. They are the only ones who have experienced significant loss and know how it feels. Maybe that's why I kissed him, I'm not sure. As Steffi notes, she is referring to the man who dated her mother. Luna claims that her emotions are all over the place at the moment, especially in light of the possibility that her mother is to blame for the fatalities at Il Giardino. To Luna, Steffi says, this isn't her. What became of the young woman who was dating her brother, RJ, and worked at Forrester? You used to live at the beach home with him, and now you're at the Spencer estate. Oh, very noticeable increase. Luna queries her implied meaning. According to Steffi, her mother had an extramarital romance with Tom Starr, who claimed to be her father and is now deceased. Bill and the life he has given them are loved, according to Luna's mother. Her mother promised to go above and above for her. Ha! Huh, nods Steffi. Yes, if Tom Starr was your father, then Poppy had a lot to lose. You also had a lot to lose, don't you? Look at the life you have now, she muses as she takes a sip of her drink. Your destiny is predetermined. You're living at Bill Spencer's house, so everything is good. Everything is beginning to make clear, oh my god. You kissed Bill for that reason. You desire him to yourself. Is that your identity? The type of person who will stop at nothing to achieve their goals, money, power, even if it means committing murder. Steffi acknowledges, I'm correct. You succeeded. You took Hollis and Tom's lives. Luna grinned gradually. As Steffi tries to concentrate on Luna's face, she starts to feel dizzy and sways. She gazes at the almost empty glass in her hand before it shatter and falls to the ground. As Steffi falls, Luna is standing over her. Burke tells Ridge at Forrester that she was surprised to see Taylor at work. Ridge said that she has returned to resume her profession. Although Burke believes Steffi will be content, the timing wasn't ideal. Ridge declares, this is a major problem. After realizing that her daughter went too far, Burke knows the reason behind his anger. She will take care of Hope and is also concerned. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed The Bold and The Beautiful, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below with your thoughts. What do you think will happen next? We love hearing from you.